Hello friends, welcome back to Tech with Viresh. In this particular video today, we're going to discuss what are the new features, design and the architectural changes that we're going to expect in Spark 3. Uh, Spark 3 is already out as public preview. I think last December it was uh, been open for public preview and it is available on the Spark website. Uh, definitely the coordinates are not available as dependencies on Maven, but we can go ahead and uh, build the code for Spark 3 and uh, try out some features. <coughs> In this particular video today, we're going to discuss out uh, what are the uh, you know essential changes and the new features that we're going to get with Spark 3. Spark 3 happens to be one of the major um, uh, you know major version upgrade, and a lot of new things are coming in from the design app from the design and architecture perspective so guys let's start this video and before I move forward I would like to request all my viewers uh, please do like comment and share on on the videos that you like and uh, we would be very happy to kind of receive your feedback and work upon it at the same time don't forget to subscribe the channel so guys let's start so a uh, just quick uh, review of this particular slide if you see before we get into this world of Hadoop map reduce which kind of break through uh, a lot of ways how data was computed earlier but before uh, you know map reduce come into the picture we did have right data warehouses as the you know end all uh, data archival systems uh, massive data archival systems and um, data warehouse definitely had a lot of uh, you know, shortcomings which kind of uh, fulfilled by Hadoop that's the reason this technology came into the picture to kind of supplement or work upon the shortcomings that we have in the data warehouse world uh, but there were a couple of good things with data warehouse obviously your SQL and optimization which make the things you know your transactions more acidic uh, SQL happens to be the uh, declarative programming so programmer has nothing to do how internally that query is parsed plans get generated how that work works upon just fire the command and get the results uh, very important feature with the SQL world was data modeling and catalog so these and definitely the asset transformation that was the biggest thing that was missing in Hadoop MapReduce and people coming and you know working in the transactions kind of zone with the SQL world and how the data was manipulated earlier asset has a lot of advantages uh, with the file system kind of scenario in Hadoop it doesn't work right so now with Spark 3, we are looking to kind of uh, have a fix or solutions for these shortcomings of Hadoop MapReduce. This this area primarily. If you see these uh, the top three areas we're talking about, Spark heavily inspired by Hadoop MapReduce. So we had these three features, you know, separation of computer and storage, awesome, I mean path breaking uh, phenomena. That worked great. Even now with the traditional data warehouses, Azure SQL servers and all, they're following the similar pattern. But these low four items, so low three items, I will say, you know, optimizations, data model, catalog, asset properties, and stuff like that would be missing in Hadoop MapReduce and uh, Spark current versions. So that is what we're going to uh, cater uh, as new features in Spark 3. Uh, some of the essential features, you know, top three features I'll rate as part of this Spark 3 is obviously you improve optimizers and catalogs. They have given a pluggable uh, integration for the catalogs across different data sources. You know, asset properties have been brought into as the Delta Lake. And obviously, there are uh, a lot of good support for data scientists to kind of scale their uh, you know, Python pandas and stuff to the uh, distributed computer of computing of Spark. Uh, the first one we're talking about these data source P2 APIs, which were kind of evolving in Spark 2 and current versions. Now they're going to be mature APIs with Spark 3. Uh, this is kind of an integrated catalog we're going to we're going to get as part of Spark 3, where we can plug in any sort of data source and kind of write directly uh, have integrated APIs to read and write from the catalog tables directly uh, so this is one of the marquee feature that we are getting in with Spark 3 pluggable data catalog next one we talk about is the uh, improved pushdown we talked about in the current versions also we do have support for predicate pushdowns and, and uh, how we can optimize the queries but that's had been enhanced with Spark 3 uh, the query uh, 
uh, in a form the first thing that we're gonna get is in the form of adaptive query execution which kind of takes a smart decision rather than just falling on to the you know sort merge join every time it can analyze the tables and based on the size it can convert the uh, expensive sort joins into the broadcast joins wherever it is applicable so adaptive query execution is one of the features as part of the you know SQL optimizations another one uh, which is going to be a very important stuff especially talking about uh, the scenarios of data warehouse world where you always have some sort of fact tables and dimension tables and you kind of join them so this uh, one of the features we're talking about is dynamic partition pruning DPV now try to understand see if you see the picture one so this is available and this is now enhanced in spark 3 also right so this is a predicate pushed down so the filters would be pushed down uh, before the scan of the entire table the table would be filtered so you would have some you know, smaller subset of data that would be scanned so that will optimize the whole thing here do you see but do you often see you know in a data warehouse kind of scenario or say a star schema kind of scenario you always would have a, a fact table joining with the dimension table and dimension table this side usually would be a smaller one so your filters are applied on the smaller table itself but they're never gonna um, applied on the fact tables which are usually the bigger and you know massive tables so that is what is dynamic partition pruning what they will do the simple filters the, the similar filters that we gonna apply on the dimension side to get that optimization same would be at the runtime replicated on the fact tables at the same time I'm just taking the example of fact and dimension so that we can relate but the idea is that if the two tables getting into a join scenario uh, we may have a filter or filter predicate push down on one side of the table the same filters can also be dynamically applied on the other side of the join tables right so this is dynamic partition pruning and it's one of the very important features now one of the most important features that we are anticipating with spark 3 is the asset properties on spark so that all our transactions with the data lake how we are reading writing data can come under that gambit of transaction management so that it's either full or none or different behaviors of asset uh, properties that we can get so Delta is coming from uh, another proprietary company used to be like Delta.io and now they have open source this concept it's been open source for quite some time and this is looking to target that problem of data swamps and lack of asset properties uh, with both Lambda and Kappa architecture it's, it's bound it's 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 difficult to stop to get into a data swamps kind of a problem where you will create silos of data and stuff like that and uh, the whole idea of getting this delta lake concept onboarding into the spark world is to bring it kind of towards a unified analytics kind of a scenario so that we can have a unified analytics pra platform that we are trying to present a, uh, spark 3 as even the streaming and batch <coughs> apis with the spark 3 are much more unified absolutely unified so to speak and the properties that we're going to bring in from this delta lake is obviously asset transactions your schema info enforcement and even the uh, scalable metadata handling this is very important because the way delta lake kind of uh, acknowledges or manages the metadata it also consider metadata can also grow to the huge number of volumes and the treatment for metadata is also like the 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 regular data or the regular big data so to speak so they have a similar approach to handle metadata as well and a support to handle the time series kind of data scenarios uh, this is how if we try to look the the internal architecture high level architecture of the data lakes they have different regions how the data is categorized before it's been available for eventual consumption for analytics or for other noun streams you have different zones and on each zones you have an handle to do some kind of inserts you know updates deletes so all this transactional acidic ab uh, abilities are available at each layer so that you can refine your data and the whole idea think it from a perspective said when you have say number of different data pipelines you know ingestion pipelines f uh, maybe the stream or batch coming from uh, coming from uh, you know uh, down coming from your upstreams wherein you have you know data being concurrently written to uh, um, the single files 
uh, or the single tables you know uh, then it becomes very difficult to ensure the integrity of data that is where this data lake will come into the picture and try to help it out uh, and the greatest point that we have about is it's provide the strongest level of isolation which is reliability so that is something to watch out in spark 3 another uh, another new feature that we're gonna get with spark 3 is that along with yarn mesos and standalone now kubernetes is a fully integrated and supported resource manager with spark 3 and uh, needless to so needless to say it comes up with a lot of great advantages obviously the advantages in terms of you know support for gpus and scheduling uh, your kerberos authentication is uh, kind of uh, supported with the uh, kubernetes as source managers so another small but i think a very handy feature that's gonna go, uh, that would be available with the spark 3 is the analysis that we run to do that uh, adaptive query planning right uh, to to analyze the uh, tables to do that cost based optimization now that analysis can be performed on your cache queries as well i think that is what uh, the developer community is asking for and that's is available with spark 3 so there's a small syntax if you see out here you can easily see that uh, these analysis analyze commands now is available for statistical analysis on both uh, cache it qu uh, tables and normal tables as well cache data and your normal data ah, so guys that's it primarily what we have in spark 3 koalas is another thing which helps to bring in this data scientist uh, leverage the distributed you know scalability uh, scalable features of a spark engine uh, for their data science uh, works and data science you know data processing so here it can call us can help to kind of distribute those pandas to the spark uh, nodes in the cluster uh, but essentially if we, if we try to kind of jot down the the primary highlights of uh, this spark 3 version i'll say primarily falls into uh, these three these top two areas we'll be talking primarily upon the improved optimizers and catalog and especially the asset transactions I think adaptive query execution and dynamic partition pruning are some of the marquee features so that it will make spark as a as as a right pressing engine even for data warehouses or massively parallel processing kind of scenarios so guys that's it what we have in this particular video thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe the channel. Do like, comment and share. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.